Welcome to the Office of Choral Evensong. For those who join us in the choir and for those who join us online, it's good to have you with us for our act of worship this evening. The appointed psalms for this evening on the 13th evening are 69 and 70. The congregation is invited to be seated and stands for the Gloria at the end of Psalm 70.
The first reading is written in the second chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning to read at the first verse. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. <coughs> the woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and clustered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child he was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because she said, I drew him out of the water. Here ends the first reading.
The second reading is written in the 11th chapter of the letter to the Hebrews, beginning to read at the 23rd verse. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth, because they saw that the child was beautiful, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered abuse suffered for the Christ to be greater than wealth, than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, unafraid of the king's anger, for he persevered as though he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. Here ends the second reading. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sit upon the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. in our time. to come, give to thy humble servants that by thy holy inspiration we may find the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity, and in the power of thy divine majesty to worship the unity. We beseech thee that thou wouldst keep us steadfast in this faith, and evermore defend us from all adversities who liveth and reigneth one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, 
and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thine only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Days after Trinity Sunday, our anthem tonight is one that celebrates the Trinity. The words and music are by William Mundy, who died in 1591, and the words are, Let us now laud and magnify with music of concord the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one ever-living Lord. This season when we celebrate the Trinity as a way of finding and discovering the presence of God in many beings and in language that is only a fragment of the description and presence of you, O oh God. We give thanks for the way that you revealed yourself to us in ways we can see and sense, in ways that are mysterious and beyond our understanding, in ways we can, we can express, and yet ways where words fail. We give thanks that you continue to create, redeem and sustain our world and your presence is here with us now in the sight and sound 
and silence of this place. Almighty God, most blessed and most holy, before the brightness of thy presence, the angels veil their faces with lowly reverence and adoring love. We acknowledge thine infinite glory beyond time and space, yet ever present and in this place, to worship thee, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, eternal Trinity, blessing and honour and glory and power be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. And we pray for God's presence in the lives of those who mourn or weep tonight, especially as we prepare tomorrow to mark the end of the Falklands War 40 years ago and also to remember the lives of those who died five years ago in the Grenfell Tower disaster. As our Psalms remind us tonight to save us, O Lord, from the waves that overwhelm us, we remember the ships that went down in the conflict that began on the 2nd of April 40 years ago and for the 255 people who died. As people prepare to gather tomorrow to remember, help us to remember those who from this county of Cheshire lost lives or loved ones in that conflict. For the memories more recent of those who have died, natural or realistic disasters in our lives, and all who keep safe the seas around us to protect us and uphold our liberty. O Almighty God, whose Son is the way, the truth, and the life, who walketh on water and stir and calm the sands of the sea, we pray for those who are at sea this night and those who have walked on the waters of peril and death to save our freedom. Prosper all those who are at the sea in their course and bring them to bring about safety to those who are in peril or danger, that where they would be, with a great sense of mercy, thou wouldst protect them. In Jesus Christ, our Captain and our Saviour, Amen. And as we give thanks for the life of our cathedral today, we pray for all who have come to worship here. Particularly today, we've given thanks for our retired clergy in the diocese who have come here for their Eucharist. For all our retired clergy who support our chaplaincy ministry here and are an invaluable asset to many parishes at this time who are currently without an incumbent. And as we pray for parishes in the diocese at this time, we remember the Cheadle Deanery, for Rob Munro, the Rural Dean, and for the parish of Gatley and its priest Matthew Carlyle, remembering him as he prepares to go on sabbatical. We remember clergy who are preparing for their ordination for Peter Bennett in the parishes in Crewe and Jim Britcliffe in Al Sager St. Mary Magdalene, who are to be one, two of twelve to be ordained this Saturday. And for Chris Goldsmith, the bishop who will lead their retreat starting on Wednesday. We also pray for Ben Tanner to be licensed as the Vicar of Totley in the Diocese of Sheffield this evening, and for Ben's family and those from this community who join him. We also remember the Anglican Communion, the Diocese of Remnant, 
in South India and for its Bishop Maria Louis Joseph and the people of that diocese. Here in our prayers tonight, we give thanks for lives who have touched us, for lives who have served in the cathedral tonight, for Leah, Jamie, Harriet, Matt, Neil, and Corinthian, for our welcomers here today, we remember Paul and Pat and Sylvia and Norma, giving thanks for their welcome to all our visitors and those who have come to worship. In our prayers, particularly at this time, we pray for Richard and Victoria and Sandy and their family as they mourn the death of Madeline. Pray for her soul she may rest in peace and rise in glory. And for all others, for Cash in Alderney Hospital, an 18-month-year-old little child, and for his parents and grandparents who have visited us. And for all others who we name in the silence of our hearts, And so we join all our prayers with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all God's saints as we commend ourselves unto all people to God's unfailing mercy, saying, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>